Hello and welcome back to another Fan Factory Friday. Today in Season 2, Episode 11, we're checking out Mikai's Factory. So if you do enjoy this, please do hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, let's get into it. Now, the first thing that we should mention is that though this is a smaller build compared to some that we've covered, with a total of just under 170 hours in game, at the time of this save, this factory has had one thing in mind and has been dedicated to making the main factory look clean and beautiful. And I must admit, I'm rather excited to be showing off this build. Based in the Dune area, his factory pulls in items from around the map, making use of train stations to pull resources to the various areas. The most refined areas are close by to the factory, with some beautiful factories individually housed and using raised manifolds for both splitting and merging lines together before heading to a station. At this point, as much as I'm dying to show you the main factory, we're going to check out the outside of the map first. Firstly, you can see some of the external factories like the Quickwire and the Black Powder factory. With this particular factory being close to the main factory, he opts for using conveyor buses. And following the rails from here, we have the oil and aluminium refineries. Now at this point, I would have loved the train stations to be in line with the refineries foundation placement, but regardless, he makes use of a two to one load balancer, prioritizing items to be sent back to the factory with a constant flow also going to the sink to become coupons. I'd love to see this factory fully enclosed and finished but I really appreciate getting the refineries for everything in the same area and it really does look neat and clean regardless. And the handful of power plants here are a great support network for his other power plants, such as the 46 coal power generators that he has here. This segment may look pretty samey as to other coal generators, but I think he's done a great job making this look like its own factory. I love the encasing of a container for coal, which doubles up like a control room overlooking the whole power plant area. I also love the covered buses that he uses to enclose the coal and water inputs. It really is great work here. Heading over to the swamp area, we have the thermal generators and a single nuclear power plant supporting his main factory. Now I love how clean this system is with just encased industrial beams and control rods being sent to the area with everything else being manufactured here. It's very clean and nicely thought out. Finally, we'll return to the main factory using one of the many hypertube launchers located at the outer factories. Although as a note, I do recommend taking a jetpack with you when using these things as I have no way to get down. Inside the factory, we have a series of production lines producing everything along the tiers using underfed manifolds, which look great. And each section is closed off using the walkways to give this very clean aesthetic. And if we take a look below, we can see how he set this up with items coming from one side of the factory and then heading to a buffer having been manufactured before heading to the next section. Following through the output of the manufacturing area, we can see he has buses running through the factory and is a great way to organize the system as we've seen in a few previous fan factories. Heading upstairs, we can see how he's using walkways along the side. Now, I, I think if at this point he added the walkways here with the railings, this would really perfect the look. Now, due to the width of the conveyor bus, he would have to build the walkways from the middle of a foundation. So I'd recommend using the D-ramps here. If he doesn't, 
he'll probably find that he has some encroaching space issues. But generally, this looks gorgeous. Following the bus around to the other side of the factory, we can actually see how items are split from the bus before heading to a floor to be organized, ready to be implemented into another below feeding style design. And this clean design has really paid off no matter what he's producing from a constructor, assembler or manufacturer. He is able to implement this design and I have to take my hat off to you for that. He also has room for expansion above and one final point I'd love to show off is actually his storage system located on the outside of the factory. This is a great place to put it as it's easily located um, both coming into the factory from the train station or using the hypertube launchers or the hypertube system he has and he also has it located next to the factory so if he's going in he can also use them there. As for the storage system itself located on the outside items are fed from below and brought up to the container very similar to the designs of the manufacturers that we've just seen. Using walkways he's actually done a really good job of hiding any mess and I love the use of the conveyors as walkways as well like you would in the airports. And a lot of these techniques I have shown in my neat design guides, which if you want, you can check them out. I'll place a link in the top right hand corner now. But to sum up this build, though it's not huge, the factory looks stunning in my opinion, living up to his rule of creating a clean and beautiful factory. And this is the style of look that I tend to aim for in my 5x5 challenge. It really is a fantastic spotlight and I'd love to see how this build has progressed when it comes to season 3 of Fan Factory Friday if possible. So special thanks goes out to Mikai for offering this factory for the showcase. If you agree with me and think this build was clean and beautiful then be sure to hit a thumbs up and if you want to see more community spotlights and satisfactory content be sure to hit the subscribe button. Anyway guys I am going to leave it there before I witter on and um, thank you so much for joining us and until next time as always ciao for now.